Right, morning YouTubers, Facebookers, and Instagrammers. This morning I'm talking about the magic trick to make your dog recall better. Well, there isn't one. Right, now that clickbait's over with, let's talk about the reality of it. So, for me, recall is something that people use to get out of trouble when they've done a number of things running up to a certain point that they should or shouldn't have done. So what I mean by that is if your dog is generally very, very well trained, so it walks the hill nice and it sits up on the stop whistle, changes direction, handles, retrieves, extra, everything else, you're in control of the dog. So at the point that you then call the dog back, it's general respect for you and how you make that dog feel is already in place to send that dog back to you like a remote control car. And talking about remote control cars, these dogs need to feel like they're being driven all the time. The second you take your hands off the control set, there's a very good chance they're gonna crash. Okay, so it's really, really important to make sure all your other things are in place. I generally say to my clients a lot of the time, if you're relying on recall, or even a stop whistle in a lot of cases, it's more than likely something running up to that point. Thank you, Mr. Cockrell. It's normally something at that point that has already gone wrong. So I generally always try and look at that issue first before just going straight for recall. Now I know a lot of people might do things like sitting the dog up, uh, you know, sit and stay. By the way, there's no such thing as stay. Nothing, no, no such thing as stay at all. If you told your dog to sit and you move away and it moves, it's not stay, it's not sitting, is it? So you put it back, ask it to sit, and then you repeat, but you don't say stay. I say, I say stay for my clients, so they understand what I'm saying. But if it's just sit, it's sit. Anyway, off on a tangent there. Right, back to it. Um, if you're doing sort of sit and then walking away from the dog and calling your dog up, first of all, in very novicely bred dogs, you'll probably make that dog quite fidgety on the sit, which won't help you. Again, something I talk about with my clients a lot, for every good thing you teach or every skill you teach, there's normally one or two negatives that can come off that. And so understanding what those are and the orders that you do things can be quite complex and you've got to weigh up the options as to what, uh, what thing that you need to uh, do next, depending on your dog's individual issues. And that is very, very much down to the individual dog. And it's impossible just to set out a set route for every dog that's out there. Right, back off the tangent, back onto what we're talking about. Yeah, if you're relying on just calling that dog in off a sit, yeah, that might work. But actually the reality is if your dog overall is not trained in every other area, when you're really under pressure, is your recall gonna be reliable? 90% of the time, no. Now 90% of the time the dog comes back, you say, that's not a bad recall. But 90% of the time when you're calling it back, it probably hasn't got something that's putting it under pressure to make it think twice about coming back. So maybe another dog, or in the worst possible case, finds a pheasant, a rabbit, a pigeon, and it's gone, okay? If you, uh, as I said, if you are reliably training your dog correctly in the right order and doing all the skills, keeping the dog within the correct range, ticking all the boxes as you go, at the point that you then start uh, doing any form of recall, now in my case, it's normally the only time I'm actually calling the dog back on what you might call recall, is normally when the dog's got a dumb in its mouth or a bird's got a, sorry, a bird's got a wing across its face, it's coming in on the sound, especially in the woodland where it can easily miss you for a tree, believe it or not. Um, that's really the only time that I'm doing it, to be honest with you. If, I've, if I'm hunting the dog and I'm finishing, I normally just pick the dog back across my feet, sit it up and then say heel. I appreciate a lot of people might not be training like that and they're just letting their dog run around and they just want to be able to recall it back. Now, as I said, 90% of the time it might work for you if you've done it fairly well, but 90% is not trained. The 10% can let you down when you really need to. Maybe it bumps a bird near a, uh, you know, near a, a fence that goes across the road. The last thing you want is your dog ignoring that or whether it be the stop through the fence, cross the road, bang. That's your worst nightmare, you don't want that. So the only way that you're gonna get 99.9% .9 reliable is by doing all the rest of your training correctly. Anyway, I hope you <laughs> enjoyed my rant. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and I'll try and come up with some more useful uh, tips and hints for your gun dog training soon. Take care, guys.